Jumping into this week's episode, we'll have our coaches edition of Around the Mountain with EOU men's and women's soccer coaches Zach Mills and Jacob Plucker. First, let's cover some of the recent happenings from EOU Athletics. Women's soccer had a good weekend on the road after finishing 1-0-1 after tying Northwest on Friday. EOU crushed Evergreen 3-0 on Sunday. Natalie Mitchell led the team with two goals on the weekend. Men's soccer tied twice on the road at Northwest and Evergreen with both matches ending 2-2. Connor Young had both goals on Friday while Carlos Solorio had a goal and an assist on Sunday at Evergreen. Mounties are currently tied for 6th in the CCC and head back on the road to Multnomah and War Pacific in Portland. Volleyball ran its win streak to 10 games with a sweep of Oregon Tech on Friday on the road. Then, in a battle of top 15 ranked teams, EOU fell to number 10 Southern Oregon in four sets on Saturday. The Mounties are home this weekend against Warner Pacific and Multnomah for Dig Pink Breast Cancer Awareness Weekend. Football crushed Montana State Northern 58-24, led by 637 yards of offense. Currently, the offense ranks first in the Frontier Conference with 480.2 yards per game. With this win, ELU moved up to number 24 in the NAIA rankings, the first time in the top 25 this year. Next up is they'll have a rematch with number 7 Southern Oregon on Saturday at 12 p.m. in Ashland. Men's basketball opens its season this Friday and Saturday with the Quinn Classic. The Mounties host Salish Kootenai on Friday at 4 p.m. and New Hope Christian on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. The EOU cross country teams are back in action on Saturday at the Lewis Clark State Invitational. Now please welcome EOU head men's soccer coach Zach Mills and head women's soccer coach Jacob Flucker. Yeah, um, you know, I think that was one important um, thing that we addressed when Zach got hired on as far as we want our teams to uh, you know, be there for each other and support each other and I'm there to help him and he's there to help me um, and you know because again it's kind of that two teams one family and you know we're going to be more successful when we're kind of bouncing ideas off of each other so um, being able to um, said, kind of go with one another like that it's going to be beneficial. Yeah I agree with that big Tom. I mean you can tell when, when both teams are doing well they're feeding off each other. Um, and it's really helpful. Obviously, the, the women's team is, is doing an incredible job, and we're just you know trying to make our mark as well. So it's really nice to see the teams working together. He and I do pretty well. Well, obviously, you know, uh, it, it's almost like a friendly competition. Like the women's team gets the gets the W. We definitely want to do the same thing, but not only for you know to to have that. Hey, we're we're the we're winners as well, but also because the the bus ride home is, is just so much better when we both win and we can just party on the bus and, and have a good time. Yeah, it's definitely a, a healthy competition. Um, you know, you can also use it as kind of some, some teaching points. So if, you know, maybe the men's team's playing first and maybe they they skate by or maybe they, they're struggling this or that, we can then kind of talk with our team and say, hey, look, we have to make sure that we show up because we don't want kind of the same type of thing happening or vice versa, you know? Um, and then also it's always nice when, you know, whichever team, you know, goes first is able to you know, hopefully have the win and the result and then able to support and be a little bit more cheerful than had they have lost. Yeah. So. That's the camaraderie that, that comes with not just the women's soccer but all the other sports. I'm a big fan of how the athletic department works together. Um, I definitely wanted that and I could, you know, one reason I, I think I, I accepted the position was because I could feel that family environment. Um, so that was a big part of it for me. Yeah, to me, again, I think it's you know, being able to be successful, but just being competitive, whether that's internally between the athletic department, whether that's you know, with our girls, whether that's with you know, our teams. Um, I'm a pretty competitive person, so you know, anything that we can kind of compete and kind of get after a little bit is always fun. Favorite athlete is Jerry Rice. Okay, hands down, he's the GOAT, okay? No problem. Uh, soccer player though, and it's probably going to catch a lot of people uh, off off guard, is um, Pablo Mascherani. Uh, he was a men's national team player way back when. Um, I just love the heart and the hustle that he played with. Like I said, he wasn't flashy, he wasn't fancy, but you know he wasn't going to get outworked, and uh, he was always uh, a joy to watch. So, yeah. I would like to note that Pablo wore number 25 for the men's national team, so that's kind of another reason why he's awesome. Okay, okay. Uh, soccer player, as much as I think it might be changing, um, 
Lionel Messi is just incredible. He's fun to watch. He, he, you know, especially in his prime, you know, never going down, always making the right decision, being creative. I just like that style of play. We're going to see how much we can learn about our ERU soccer coaches with a little game of Never Have I Ever. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I can't really think of any times, but I'm just sure. I'm, I'm certain of it. I'm certain of it. I mean, I don't have a story about my own, but another coaching buddy of mine um, was trying to talk with his assistant about a player who was uh, unhappy with some things, and he actually sent it to the player <laughs> instead of the coach. Yep. So that yep. was an interesting conversation. Yep. For sure. Not at ELU, though. No. Not at ELU. Not at ELU. And honestly, I, tr I try so hard not to use that word, but I, it was, it was a, a nightmare. Oh, yeah. I like that though. A lot of people don't. Um, I'm, I kind of, it's fun. Sleep paralysis. A couple times. See, that's, that's that ongoing do you not do you. I think you tend to because you show the ones that are working hard or doing the things right. And so that kind of gravitates, you know, things like that. So it's a, good, it's a good. very uh, tricky question. That's a good answer. I'm just going to say this because I have Pooms on my team. So obviously, guys. I've gotten more cards as a coach than I have as a player. Whoa. <laughs> okay. As a coach, I have not been ejected as a game and from yeah. a game. Yet. It's coming, guys. Be ready. Excuse me. Yes. Flirted or cracked? Flirted. I mean. See, if this was Bobby, she would, it would be <laughs> yes, because I know multiple times she talked about it. I don't know. Female huh? Female no. Time? No. I had to flirt with the with the guy. It worked out well. Honestly, listen, he was up. <laughs> he was about to give me a ticket because I was having to use the restroom on the side of the highway, pretty much. But I didn't want to pee my pants. And he came out and he was like talking to me about it. And he was a pretty big dude. And I said, "Listen, sir. I said, I know. I, said, I know you you've taken creatine before." <laughs> and he was like, "Well." And I said, "You know how it makes you pee all the time." And he was like, oh, you're right. Like, That's a wrap for this episode of Around the Mountain. If you want to share your opinion for our next guest on the show, be sure to comment on this video on any of our social media platforms. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.